the brand itself really has its roots going back to 1965. And so it was in that year that my parents, Jack and Jamie Davies, came to Napa Valley. Uh, they established or reestablished actually vineyards here on this property, the old Stramsburg property in the Dime Mountain district of Napa. Initially, they would do sparkling wines with Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Uh, some of those grapes were grown here on this property. But as we evolved, as the family winery evolved in the, the 90s, we started replanting here with, with red table wine grape. In 2001, we would make our first red wine from the vineyards here on this property. Uh, we called that wine the J. Davies Estate Dine Mountain District Cabernet. In 2009, we added a little bit of Pinot Noir underneath the, the Davies Vineyards umbrella. In 2012, we added a little bit of Cabernet from a couple of other sites here in Napa Valley. And so today we're also making uh, red wines from vineyards in the Calistoga District, uh, the Howell Mountain District, uh, Coonsville. Uh, this year we'll make one from Oakville as well. So effectively, we have built our Davies red wine portfolio on the experience that we've gathered over now 52 years of making sparkling wines. One thing that is a little bit different about our red wine making is that we are principally making vineyard designate wines, so wines from a specific site. Our philosophy, if you will, is to, to capture the, the, the essence of, of a, a given vineyard property in a bottle. In order to do that, we need to work with really extraordinary sites. Well, you gotta love the home property here on this site, you know, the J. Davies Vineyards. There are blocks that range from about 1,000 feet in elevation down to about 500, really three distinct areas here on, on the hillsides. I think it's important to note that there are really about 30 different sections that will be picked each year. And that enables us to make a really broad range of what we'll call base wines, with which we can craft blends. With Pinot Noir, we're working with six different sites. Two in the Carneros, two in the Sonoma Coast, and two in the Anderson Valley. As we're doing Pinot Noirs uh, from specific sites, there might be five or six different picks that we do, enabling us to make a, a range of Pinot Noirs with which we can then craft a blend from that site. We've worked with uh, Larry Hyde, uh, his son Chris now, over 20 years, initially exclusively with, with sparkling wine fruit, both Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. We've had great success with that site. One site in the, the Sonoma Coast that I definitely like to highlight is the Nobles Vineyard, which is in the Fort Ross Seaview ABA or sub ABA of, of, of Sonoma. This is a vineyard that's over a thousand feet above sea level and only about two miles from the ocean. So it gets some nice, nice heat just in just for a few hours in, in, the, in the summer afternoons, and then it stays nice and cool there. Up in the Anderson Valley, a couple of different sites that we're working with. The Farrington we've been working with since 2009. And this is a vineyard that has some beautiful uh, southwest exposure where it's about a 60 acre vineyard. We're getting six one acre sections from that vineyard and able to craft a, a beautiful Pinot Noir from it. At this point, we're also doing quite well with uh, two other uh, Cabernet sites in, in Napa Valley. Uh, the Winfield is one that I would mention in the uh, Calistoga Appalachian at the base of the, the, the Palisades, in the base of, of Mount St. Helena. And then another is actually on Howell Mountain, uh, the Red Cap Vineyard. And there uh, we're working with a couple of different blocks as well and, and producing uh, a slightly darker, richer, a little more structured uh, Cabernet from that site. And each site is singular. Each site brings its own, uh, its own character to the wine in, in the end. What's exciting about the work that we do here is that there's a connection to relationships that were established before I was really fully engaged with this. Still bear fruit, you know, are still important to us. It's fun to be able to blend different components together. In 2012, we would buy uh, what was formerly the Epps General Motors Chevrolet car dealership property. It presented us an opportunity to establish our own home which we are looking to do for our Davies Red Wines. In some ways, for the size of, of our program, it presented us the right opportunity. We're in the mode of, of gradually growing our brand, and there's room to, to grow onto the parking lot, if you will. 
uh, there in St. Helena. The, the team that makes the wines for the Davies Vineyards would start really with Sean Thompson, who's our, our lead winemaker, our director of winemaking. Working underneath him, you have Jessica Koga, associate winemaker, uh, and then my role is, is really to try to help, you know, kind of as, as maybe the older member of the team to, to help uh, steer us in a, in a real positive direction. The idea was to create something that would look a little bit like some of the older stone buildings that you'll find in St. Lena. And here we have a, a, a two-story uh, facility. There are uh, some really beautiful steel beams that, that provide the, the structure, you know, pulling, pulling the stone together. We've also used uh, recycled barn wood siding and other wood materials. Uh, so you have some, you know, the, the natural look of the, the wood, the stone framed with the steel. At the, the, the Grayson facility, we are tasting principally our red wines. Generally, we would start with a glass of a sparkling to wet the palate and to give people a sense for our, our history here at Tramsburg, where we've been worked for 50 plus years at this stage. We'd follow typically with a, a taste of two different Pinot Noirs and then a taste of two different Cabernets. Our vision for the Davies Vineyards brand is to gradually grow it there in, in the St. Helena facility. We have a production facility, we have a hospitality facility, but we also have the opportunity to grow the production a bit further and to allow for a more incredible range of experiences for the guests as well. While we're doing that, we continue to develop the, the Shramsburg property and, and business here on, on this property where we grow the Cabernet grapes, but where we, where we produce our sparkling wines. It's very exciting to, to be at this point now 52 years after my parents would have started and the family business continues. It feels like it's thriving as well as it, as it ever has.